unfortunate that he timed out. Maybe I should have given him more time. But, I mean, it's kind of a dreadful position for him. We could more or less discuss it. It's not yet lost, but... But, let's analyze this game. I'm more interested in analyzing the game and how it happened. But, I mean, I can't... I mean, what can I do, right? What can I do? Okay, so... You are a former student and viewer of mine? Former student? I hope you, I hope you enjoyed the lessons. Pseudonym. Andrew Run's also a former student. Okay. So we have a normal Hungarian, which is defense, which is why I don't want Andromeda playing this too often, because it's just a little bit passive. And after d6, there are two uh, uh, approaches to the Hungarian. Um, and of course, the best moves are either knight f6, putting pressure on e4, creating a crisis, either d3 or knight g5 or d5, um, or d4, or bishop c5. You know, both of these moves stop d4 temporarily, so then we have an Evans, we have an Evans, or or we have c3 or d3, and, and all this business. But, but the move uh, d6 or bishop b7 is quite passive. It allows d4, and white, you know, it's playable, sure, this is playable, but, but it allows an easy game for white. Whether or not Blowfish says it's, it's playable, I mean, it's a very passive game, the bishop on e7. So, still, okay, so d5, there are two options. One is de. And some players swear by this as an advantage for um, for white bishop d8. I don't really buy it that much. Knight c3, and then and then you know they just play this position. I think Petroson had some games. He played the uh, the Hungarian defense actually. Um, so so that's uh, one. But the move that I like, which is in uh, Petroson's style, and anyone who wants to take space and squeeze the opponent is of course t5. And and now black is sort of stuck with a worse version of uh, King's Indian. I think because bishop on e7 is a little misplaced, maybe it should go on g7, g, g7 instead of g6. Maybe he'll try and trade this bishop off one day, but it's not really a, a reality. And we play the move bishop d3 to stop him from playing f5 to restrict that, that advance. And then we play c4 so that we get our pawn uh, going in knight c3 so we get like a better king's indian. I had this many times. Um, after studying games, I decided I like this bishop d3, c4, knight c3, and just play it like a white side of a king's indian with this knight on b8 sort of uh, uh, sort of like a an old Indian for for black c4 castles knight c3 c6 I mean if he wanted to play he should go straight Kings Indian maybe castles and uh, knight d7 h3 you know knight c5 bishop c2 something like this maybe this would be the better way for him to go then maybe c6 so he gets his knight into the game he didn't do it he played c6 early I didn't really like it knight d7 so he's going for that now knight b6 is a, is a critical error. He needs to play in the, the uh, King's Indian fashion. And I think uh, Petroson had some games with Larson. And, and I remember one, I think, in this type of position where he squeezed him. Uh, you know, bishop b3, queen d2. It's, it's, un, it's un, unpleasant. But uh, knight b6, now, now this is just lost strategically. a4. It's just lost strategically. a4, bishop b8. Uh a5, knight d7. I could have played b4 if I wanted to, to stop knight c5 completely and to squeeze him, but but then maybe he has a6, I don't know. I like a6 better, just taking the space. He should have taken it, not let this pawn exist on a6. He should have gotten rid of it immediately when he didn't let it, when he leaves it to exist. Now his whole queen side is just shut down, and now b4, and his pieces are shut down. And really, the rest of the game is how white wants to try and win this game because black has no moves. And black is just suffering, 92, 98, b5, and, okay, how do we actually go about winning the game? It's not that easy. If he breaks, it's not good for him. His, his pieces are so, are so shy, so to speak. So, um, it's uh, very, very unpleasant. Very unpleasant for him, okay? So, um, knight c7, 
I mean, we could play rook c6 if we wanted to. I, I didn't really buy it, though. Uh, you know, f5 is fine. What if he, if he takes with the, with the bishop? Then it was one-sided, yes. Vc. I mean, this is quite bad. But maybe we had more. Okay, this knight is in chains forever. Yes, he could play here and, you know, knight c5 or something like this. But we could just take it. And then bishop c4. And, uh, you know, this is just... This is just over, you know, knight coming to d5. This is a dead piece, and this is just completely hopeless. So we could have played rook c6, but I wasn't really sure he had f5. So yes, I was looking at this move, bishop b6, and then a7. We considered this, ha, <laughs> knight a8, but I wasn't sure about this, actually. Take, and, and, and rook a8. Okay, and I missed, um, queen b4 immediately, picking up this guy, or queen e3. So this, this would have won. This was pretty direct. Queen e3, and this is sort of crushing. So, so yes, bishop b6, the original instinct, and sometimes when you have your original instinct, and then you, you want to, you doubt yourself, you don't do it, and then you regret it later, but this is very intuitive take, and a, you know, and a7, of course, the opponent might always have defenses, so you don't want to get too shy, you know, when you have a nice move, a nice instinct, a instinctual move, queen e3, I just, you know, I stopped here, and, oh, he's getting back this, maybe we look for more, but, but this b-pawn's hanging, so instead I played I played queen b4, and now he, you know, he, okay, he gets out a little bit. There's knight g3. Again, rook c6 is thematic. I waited on it, but this is pretty thematic move. I mean, you, you don't get more for the exchange than this. I mean, this is just, this is just massive compensation for the exchange. Basically winning. We could take over light scores over here. We could take over light scores over here. And in this type of position, black has no moves. If g6, we get the exchange back. It's trapped. So we can't stop knight f5. I mean, f6 is sort of such a timid move. I mean, knight h4, knight f5. It's it's very 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 uh, painful. If g6, okay. Even yeah, I mean, we could even play down the exchange and go for a kingside attack. But you know, we want to try and break through. So so we don't need to. Well, we get rid of this bishop. So one of the ideas behind it is to get rid of this bishop so we own so we own the light scores. No, because when the bishop's gone, when the bishop's gone, um, yeah, when the bishop's gone, we own the light scores. So that's so that's the reason. Okay. So this is knight g3 or knight d2. Either way. Okay, bishop e8. And now this was not a good move, I don't feel. I mean it's saying it's not that bad, but if I were black, I would want to take here. But, you know, I guess bishop f4, it's, it's actually, he never get this in. So maybe it was right. I mean, it was instinctual again, instinctive to play f4. And, you know, if he takes, he can't ever, I just don't want to see knights coming to c5 or e5. And, okay, it's not going to happen. But, but um, yeah, this is dominating. So f4. He, again, should play knight, knight here, and then, and now he's got this move. Okay, so now he's threatening to take and play knight e5. And the problem with this f4, f4 business is now he has this thematic bishop g5 trading off his bad piece. And now, actually, he's totally solved all his problems, and knight's coming to c5, and all of a sudden, the game turns on its head, and it's anybody's game. So we don't want to uh, allow that. That's why f4 was a little bit uh, not solid enough, I don't think. But uh, we were in time pressure, so... Okay, then he just does this, he allows f5. And now he's totally hopeless. Now I can do anything. Move around a little bit. I mean, again, rook c6 surely can be played. But why give up this rook for this, this knight at this point? Because I want to, the thematic way is to take back this way. So we get the squares for the knight on d5, bishop on c4. So I don't want to take back this way. You know, because even if I put my knight on b5, there's no, there's no real break. Uh, rook g1. Queen d8, knight c4, bishop e8, h4, queen, uh, yeah, I thought it was the best move. Yeah, okay, did he, did he flag here? Yeah, g5, I thought. I played g5, knight d7, okay, and now, uh, you know, maybe knight c3, maybe? Yeah, this was no good. Okay, we can take a look at this, but look, so good knight, knight takes f6, and he's in the game. Bishop h5 and knight g4, all of a sudden this bishop is playing. Bishop h6, um, ah, bishop f8, why not g6? 
Yeah, it looks pretty. It looks pretty miserable for him. G6, and we can like swing the knight to e3 even. And if he goes for something like queen c5, just queen back to b2 or even d2. And now he, he can't move anything. There's no no targets for him. And like these moves are coming, and we're just gonna invade and just destroy him on the uh, on the king side. And remember, he's playing down a piece, so you want to keep the squeeze. Don't trade pieces. Keep his keep his position in, in, entangled. He can't move anything. Um, and yeah, he's just suffering. Okay, so he ended up flagging in what is uh, still a dreadful position. He improved one piece, but it's still pressure all over the board. Maybe we could have won uh, faster, but um, but that's that's good enough. That's good enough uh, for now. Okay, thanks guys, and we'll keep going. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll post that later. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'll post that later. Um. So again, Soka, if you want to review, is Gary still here? Or did he go to bed? Gar, what's the name of the Cabo Blanca game? Cabo Blanca versus what's his name? In that famous squeeze game. So uh, students can review that famous. It's the V V V for victory uh, squeeze, where pawns look like a V. And then also, I would recommend the modern example, um, Gelf and uh, Campora, as well. Winter game's a different kind of squeeze. Okay, I mean let's let's take a look at it. Uh, uh, I mean, not winter Capablanca, tribal, yeah, tribal, Capablanca tribal, V for victory. Yeah. Well, we'll just take a quick look. But Gelfin Campur is a more modern example. Andromeda, link me the game. I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. Okay. Uh, this is an easier example, right? Yeah, okay. Very, very famous game. Capablanca won. Well, we're just going to go quickly through this famous game. Capablanca Tribal. The squeeze. Um, so, Semislav. And this move order of the semi-slav is actually not right. Actually, in this position, black should play knight f6. And if he plays e6 here, it allows this early bishop g5. So I play knight f6 here, and I don't play e6 here because of bishop g5. Um, I mean, here I play e I could play e6 in tournaments. I've played it many times because this allows a martial gambit, but but it's a very sharp, uh, very sharp uh, gambit many many games in this position bishop pair dark squares black has no development but he has a pawn or, or, or more um, but this position is, is rather it's rather dreadful uh, this e6 you know um, with the knight on c3 there's no bishop g5 uh, but uh, so yeah so this is a semi slav and now knight f3 knight f6 and black white has to decide what he wants what he wants to do with his with his development um, obviously, if he plays g3, we can play dc, which is a complicated variation. It's played a lot now. Uh, e3, uh, then knight bd7, and this is a moron, which is very common. Bishop d3, dc4, and b5 is played all over the place these days. I played it many, many games in big, big events. Um, one of my main openings, so moron. Um, or queen c2 is normal. Or if white wants to be extremely principled, he can play bishop g5. And now we allow either the botanic variation, dc, e4, um, sorry, e4, b5, e5, this defends this pawn, and now e5, so dc, this is the botanic, b5, it first debuted in the game botanic Dake, 1945, USSR versus uh, the USA, it was a radio match, it's the first uh, sporting event, I think, between uh, those two countries, I did a research on it. In college, but this is this is the first debut of the Bafinik, and he was researching it with uh, his sparring partner Rogozin. Yeah, at the time, 
and I think g3 is uh, the theory. And then there's a queen b6 and all this. I mean, if c5, there's, there's d5. So this is a very complicated Bofinic variation. And then, uh, of course, after bishop g5, there's the, the Moscow. White can give up the bishop pair and have a solid position. I think this is called anti-Moscow. Or um, he can go for it and allow the pawn sacrifice, bishop h4, dc e4, threatening e5, and then uh, g5, bishop g3, and b5. This is an extremely complicated Moscow gambit, usually bishop e2. And it's uh, anybody's game. You can see white has a center, but black has a pawn. Extremely complicated. Okay, so now, um, instead it was just e6, bishop g5, and Capablanca got an easy game. He got his bishop outside the pawn chain. And you're going to see, he just squeezes him. Uh, black is weak on dark squares. So knight d2, and watch Capablanca. Okay, this was a very poor move. He should have just played knight f6. Now, why is it a poor move? Because he's already weak on the dark squares, and he makes them weaker. F5, and now it's even worse for him. E3, knight f, yeah, and this is just a bad position. Cabo Blanc is eventually going to play c5 and just squeeze him. Let's see when he does it first. He'll play knight e5 and f4. Get the squeeze going, maybe b4. Okay, now he should not have allowed knight e5. Should have left the knight on d7. He didn't do it. Knight goes to e5, f4 is coming, and the squeeze is coming, okay? Again, should have broken with c5 to stop this squeeze. He didn't, he didn't do it. And now, again, if white, I would have played c5, maybe stop this. Okay, and now he's going to do it eventually. b4. This is really bad. Rook c1, he's just building the position. Queen f2. And okay, here we go. So you can see this bishop on e is just dreadful. And the rest is going to be a matter of technique. Why did he go back? Because he has more space, so he wants to avoid exchanges and leave black suffering in his position. Don't allow the exchange. Go back. A little counterintuitive if you don't know the concept. And now squeeze. And now black is stuck with no moves. His knight's better, so why exchange it? Correct. Leave him with his bad piece. So that's just a bad knight on g4. Hopelessly moving around. And now here comes g5. Rook g2. And g5 coming. h4 coming next. h5. Really brutal, brutal game. He can't take this. If he takes this, queen h4 comes and he gets crushed. This is a kind of a game that everybody should know, actually. Queen c3, king f2, and then, you know, rook h1 just squeezing. He'll do h6 when he wants to. He's going to play on both sides of the board and then maybe play over here and then put the pawn on b6. Maybe put the knight on a5, something like this, or try and break or sacrifice. Kasparov won a game with uh, deep blue or deep junior in a very similar way in um, a semi-slot g4 variation. I recall. Uh, queen a3, because the computer back then didn't recognize the danger. Okay, he takes h6. This is a brutal move, so that you don't allow the rooks to get to a8. Checks, then takes. If he takes that, then the whole queen side falls, you know, or he loses a piece, but he doesn't even have to do it. He can do this, and he's dead lost anyway. These rooks are now completely banned in the corner, and now b6. Yeah. Okay, so now with b6, uh, queen b8, and now we're going to work the a7 square. We work the a7 square, and now we put the rook on a7, and then now we work this b7 pawn. This is sort of a textbook uh, game by Capablanca. All great players have, have studied this game. This is well known. It shows just what a legend Capablanca was. He's going to put his king on h4 so that he doesn't allow knight g5, so this would be a big blunder. Uh, he's still winning, even if he gives his pawn, but no need. Put the king on h4. These pieces are just totally hopeless, cannot move anything. And now, yeah, he just puts the king back, and now knight comes to a5. Picks up this pawn, knight d8. Okay, now we're going to have a sacrifice, bishop a6 or knight b7. He plays bishop a6, and this is just totally gone. And this was just a textbook game. Uh, how many of you in the chat uh, know know about this game? This is a brutal finish. I mean, this is hanging too. So it reminds me of these types of games. And knight takes c6. Textbook game. Hope you guys enjoy that one. All right, and we keep going now. All right.